Hello, all of my beautiful people. This is Ashley with Ashley Says So. I am back with another Old Hollywood Scandals video. This video is going to be on the Mr. Ted Healy, and it's also going to touch on Mr. Wallace Berry. Let's find out why their stories mesh together. Joanne, where you at? Come on in the room, baby. This one is for you. Hey, good. Ted Healy was born October 1st, 1896 in Houston, Texas to Charlie Nash and Eugenia McGinty Nash. And his actual birth name was Ernest Lee Nash. Ted had a very rough childhood. His parents split up and his mother dropped he and his sister Marcia off to relatives in 1900 while she went around and tried to pursue an entertainment career. And by 1909, he and his sister Marcia had actually moved back with their mother and they resided in New York City. Now, New York at this time was the place to be especially if you were doing stage work. So Ted soon started his own stage show. And he brought along a friend that he had met when he was around 12 years old called Mo Howard. You may know him as Mo from the Three Stooges. Now at this time, Ted and Mo were doing shows and they were okay, but they were not making enough money to really get them by. And so Mo was like, hey, you know, I can't do this. I got to actually make some money. I'm trying to make something of myself. So he actually left the show and left Ted alone. But this didn't stop Ted. He continued to develop his craft and work on his personality. And by the 1920s, he was a very successful vaudeville showman. In fact, he was so successful that he was the highest paid person in vaudeville at that time. And let me tell you, honey, he was very successful, like real successful. He was bringing in $1,200 a week. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money now. Think about back then. Dude, I'm trying to bring that money in. Shucks, I'm mad now. Now, just because Mo had left the show, that does not mean that he and Ted did not remain friends. They actually did. And when Mo saw Ted getting all this success, he wanted back in. And thankfully, Ted let him back in. But what Mo didn't know is that although he had the same personality and he looked at Ted like, you know, childhood friends, Ted did not feel the same at this time. Ted had let the money go to his head. You know what I'm saying? Let me tell you how funny Ted was acting in just a minute. Let me get this out of the way. So, like I said, Ted and Mo, they have a show. Um, the show's going well, and Mo's brother, Shemp, ended up coming to that show. Well, during the show, Mo wanted to do something that would stand out, something that would make the crowd burst out in laughter. So what he did is called out into the audience to his brother, Shemp. Don't know exactly what was said, but I can imagine it was something like, um... Hey, stupid, shut up or something. I don't know. You know, Three Stooges type stuff. But anyways, he yelled out something to his brother and Shemp, without missing a beat, yelled something back and the crowd went absolutely insane. And when Ted saw this, Mo did not even have to talk him into hiring Shemp. Ted was like, come on, Shemp, because you're funny. We need you. And not only did he hire Shemp, he also hired Larry Fine whom was a person trying to get into comedy and into vaudeville and maybe did a little few shows here and there, but he wasn't doing anything big. He was not making very much money, but Ted saw him and he thought he was funny. So he told him, come on, join the troupe and you become one of my stooges. And Larry did not hesitate. He joined and it actually was a great choice for Ted. And this leads me back to what I was saying earlier about Ted changing. Ted was definitely not the guy that he used to be. Let me tell you some of the stuff he was doing, honey. Here come the drama, here come the tea, here come the scandal, because he was doing the most. So, obviously, you guys know the Three Stooges. You know their antics. You know how they slap each other and poke each other in the eye, all this good stuff. You guys know what they do. Well, let me put it in perspective for you. The show was Ted Healy and his Three Stooges. Meaning that he was the one that would be the debonair businessman, the one that's got it all together. Um, let's say they're doing a fireman skit. He was the fireman that was regular and competent. Now his stooges would be the incompetent fools that they were, that we all know them as. And so Ted would be the one that when they did something stupid or something that was just outright ridiculous, he would be the one that was delivering the slaps, the kicks, the punches and things like that. But he was doing it for real. Like he was beating up on these guys, like really abusing them. They would have bruises and cuts and everything after the show. And so Shemp was like, you know, Ted, can you please not hit us like that? Can you please not hit us at all, really? Like if you want, we can have somebody clap or do a noise in the background when you want to do a slap or whatever else you want to do. But Ted told them, hey, listen, people want to see it. 
That's what made people laugh. The realness of the show is what made people laugh. And Bashemp was like, but you don't have to do that. Even if you do want realness, you do not have to hit us as hard as you do. Look at me, man. You're leaving bruises and cuts on me. And Ted was like, hey, guess what, buddy? This is my show. You either want to be slapped around and hit and get paid, or you can shut up and get out. Simple as that. Like, so what you going to do? So they shut their mouths and they went on with it. But after a while, Shimp, he had had enough. He said, Ted, you're not going to be slapping me like this. Because if you slap me one more time, I swear to God, I'm going to knock your block off. And so he actually left and tried to create his own stage show because he just couldn't take it anymore. Now, Mo, I mean, I know he loved his brother, but he was not loyal to his brother in that way. Mo was like, listen, my coins is good. Like, I'm good over here. My face is hard. I'm taking these punches and slaps. I can take it. I'm making money here. I'm not leaving the show. Bye, Shim. But now they were lacking a stooge. And so Mo said, hey, I know somebody. What about my baby brother? He's pretty funny. And so enter Curly, Curly Howard, who is the baby brother of Shemp and Mo Howard. Now you all know Curly as the bald-headed, kind of heavy-set stooge, but this is a fun fact. Curly had an actual head full of curly hair when he came to join the stooges, but Ted told him that he wanted to cut it off and be bald. And so Curly is like, wait a minute, man, my name is Curly. It's Curly because of my hair. And Ted is like, ha! That makes it even more funny. They're going to be calling you Curly when you got a bald head. So shave it off, like I said. And Curly's like, man, what's going on? What the hell? Shave your head or you ain't going to have no job. Simple as that. So Curly did what he had to do and he shaved his head. In 1922, Ted Healy married an actress called Betty Brown. And she also became a part of his show. And everything was fine. For a few years anyway. Now, after having all of this success, Hollywood soon wanted to put all of the guys on screen. And they made a couple of successful movies before it all came crashing down. You know why? Because the Stooges were not getting paid. Ted was getting paid all that money. And he didn't want to share no money with them. And that's sad because they were the meat of his performance. Yes, he was very funny. He was. But Ted had no experience carrying anything by himself. So he really should have paid them more money, but he didn't. It was a contract disagreement. And so the students left Ted right where he stood. And those dirty, dirty movie industries, y'all know how it is. They'll do anything for that money. Baby, them folks went right behind Ted back and offered the Stooges a contract. You hear me? And put them on the doggone screen and the Stooges took off. They became even more popular than Ted. Ooh, honey, I know he was mad. I would have been real mad too. But that's what he get. You're doing too much, Ted. Like I said, everybody else is on this scandal list. You are doing too much, sir, or you were doing too much. Okay, so they took off. So what Ted tried to do is replace the Stooges. He tried to get three more men to come in and be his Stooges. But they just were not Mo, Larry, and Curly. And they just, you know, they were kind of funny. They were okay, but they just weren't doing it like his regular crew. So Ted had really flubbed it for himself. And again, once people flub it for themselves, you already know what started happening, all kind of stuff. Baby, he turned into a womanizer, started cheating on his wife with Thomasina, Haralina, and Dickamina, honey. That was a play on Tom, Dick, and Harry. Did you catch it? And he also became a ferocious alcoholic, a really bad alcoholic. And he was belligerent when he was drunk. And then he started being reckless with his money, not saving any money. You know, you got a wife and stuff to take care of, and you just out here spending money on your hoes. You out here doing whatever you want to do. Ted, get it together. But instead, Ted did the opposite. He came to his wife and was like, okay, so you fussing at me over money? You mad because I'm not saving? Well, don't worry about it. He started dating an heiress named Mary Brown Warbutton, and she had a lot of fortune, honey. And so Ted was like, you know, this is the better route for me. So he basically just totally abandoned his wife and started staying and being with Mary because he's like with her, who cares how much money I spend? She got more money than me. So I'm about to like pimp this little baby for all I can. Basically a trick. Who's going to take care of me? And so he made Mary feel like he was in love and was using that woman for all her money, child. And she just stupid, just giving it to him. Woo! 
Child. So in 1932, Betty Brown divorced Ted Healy. And she also had a trick up her sleeve for Mary too. She was like, listen, baby, since you want to sit up there and steal my husband and me and take care of him with all this money, I'm about to get some of that money too, sis. Go ahead and let me sue you for alienation of affection. You took my husband from me, now you about to pay the cost. And child Mary so crazy because at the time of the divorce, Ted had already started seeing another woman seriously. And her name was Betty Hickman. And this girl was a college student in UCLA. Yeah, he was doing the most. And let me tell you how crazy Betty was. Just crazy, child. So Ted met her, saw her somewhere. He said, hello, hi, my name is Ted Healy. She said, hi, my name is Betty Hickman. And he said, hi, Betty, will you marry me? And guess what Betty said? Why, yes, I will. And so they became engaged the very next day. Like what? Now I say all this, but they actually waited to get married. They did not get married until May 15th, 1936 in Yuma, Arizona. But y'all know Ted wasn't done with his ways. This man was still womanizing, drinking, and spending money quicker than ever. As a matter of fact, one of his hot dates that he had an affair with was the actress Miss Thelma Todd, a beautiful blonde-haired, blue-eyed actress whose life was cut very short. She's going to be on the list soon because we need to find out what happened to her. We may solve it with the rest of this video, who knows? Now it's December, 1937. Healy has shot a movie called Hollywood Hotel. Glad that he was finally done filming and excited to be back on screen. He felt pretty good about himself. He also had just had a son. That child's name was John Jacob Nash, and he was actually Ted Healy's only child. So Healy's on a high. So he decided to go and celebrate on the night of the premiere of the movie, which was December 20th. Now that night, he went to a couple of nightclubs. Nobody knows exactly how many, but they do know that every nightclub he hit, he was in there drinking, doing too much. And the last nightclub he went to was a nightclub named Trocadero. And it was one where all the greats would go. You know, everybody would hang out there. They would sometimes have a line this long. Very popular night spot. Here's where things get scandalous and sketchy and touchy, honey. So, I don't know if it's fact. It is said that Ted was at the bar. He was having his drink. And he had got good and drunk. And remember, I told y'all earlier that he gets belligerent when he gets drunk. So, he gets up. He's bumping into folks. You know, you better not do nothing to me, buddy. I'm Ted Healy. I don't know if he said that, but I imagine he did. Well, he ends up bumping into Wallace Beery. I told you it was going to mix in some type of way. Now, Wallace Beery is a big time actor. He is Hollywood royalty at this time. Box office gold. Ted bumps into him. And Wallace Beery had been sitting there with Albert Broccoli and Pat DeSico. Now, this is important. I don't think that Ted Healy knew that Pat DeSico was the owner of the club. And guess who else Pat DeSico was? Pat DeSico was also the ex-husband to Thelma Todd. Uh-oh, I smell trouble. Let's get back to the story. He bumps into them. So they start an argument. And I'm sure Pat DeSico is like, well, I can't stand this dude anyway. You've been sitting up there messing with my ex-wife and Wallace Beery with the personality that he had, he wasn't gonna stand anybody bumping into him. He just wasn't. And then there's Albert Broccoli. Albert Broccoli and Pat DeSico both probably had mob ties to Lucky Luciano. I don't know who threw the first blow, but they started jumping him. They started beating Ted Healy's behind. Punching him, kicking him, you know, doing him bad. Busting him in the face with all kind of items, you know. And then somebody started kicking him in his head. Like kicking him in his stomach over and over. Soon someone came to break up the fight. And so the three guys ran out of the club and they ran away. Ted Healy, he got himself up off the ground and he immediately walked outside. He got inside of the taxi and he told the taxi to take him to the Plaza Hotel, which is located inside of Hollywood. Well, when he got out of the taxi, he's all bleeding and humped over, oh, oh, you know, going through it. And there was a wrestler out there by the name of Man Mountain Dean. And he started to help him, started to help him inside of the hotel. And he noticed that he was in really, really bad shape. So he took him up to the room and he called a physician. Dean is asking him, you know, what happened to you, man? Who did this to you? And so Healy is telling him, like, I got my tail beat at Trocadero. Dean is saying, who did this to you? 
and he he won't he's not like telling him like he's pretty much incoherent okay this is what dean said it's kind of funny to me that he can explain all of the other details but when it comes down to who did it he's all of a sudden like wah, 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 wah. Oh. the physician gets to the hotel and he treats healy as best he can and then ted's friend named joe frisco came to pick him up from the hotel and drove him home now healy slept through the night but that morning he began experiencing convulsions his body shaking all over the place and somebody summoned his regular physician whose name was wyatt lamont now, lamont gets there and he sees that ted healy is in a terrible position and so he calls a cardiologist over there whose name was john rudder them together they're working on ted doing whatever they can to save the poor guy but despite their best efforts, he ends up dying later on that day. And his doctor Lamont refuses to sign the death certificate because he said, no, I don't know what's happened because something just don't seem right. Now listen to this. The story I just told you about Pat DeSico, Wallace Beery, and Albert Broccoli, that was the story that was going around that night. That was the story that everybody knew. Well, here come the papers, and then all of a sudden, it's out that Ted Healy was attacked by three college students, unknown college students that nobody can identify. You know why? Because Wallace Berry was a huge star, and the studios were going to do whatever it took to protect their main man. That was money coming to them, that was a big investment, and they were not going to let Ted Healy's little measly death interfere with they monies. It was an evil, evil time back then. And I said, shoot, the studios probably sometimes will do it today. So be careful, me, because I'm the one that wants to act. Now, in the end, they did do an autopsy and they said his death was caused by nephritis, secondary to acute and chronic alcoholism. But they said the reason that flared up was because of the assault. Now, let me tell you how sad this is. His wife and son are pretty much left with nothing because Ted was a big spender. And then let me tell you how grimy it was back in the 1930s. After he died, his wife had spent some time in the hospital. She had had the baby and she just couldn't deal with all the pressure. So she's in the hospital. Baby, why come somebody came to his house and took all their stuff out the house? And they already ain't had no money. Woo, child, I'm telling you. Betty got left with all kind of bills and everything. It was so bad that they had to do a fundraiser where they were feeding people and they were charging people $10 a plate just to raise money for Betty and her child. Okay, now let's get to Wallace Berry and why some people believe that he just could not do this. I don't know why people believe that because let's get into some scandalous tea about this man. He was a rough and tough kind of a guy. He scraped his way up to the top because he was born really with nothing. He actually had joined the circus and he was doing circus training, but he actually left there when one of the big cats tried to scratch him and scratched his arms, almost scratched his eyes out. So he got up out of there. I guess he wasn't tough enough for that. So he clawed his way up to the top. He's a big time star in Hollywood making some big money. And most of his contemporaries and people that were around him said he was a nasty, nasty man. Even Jackie Cooper, who was a child star that Wallace Beery was working with on a few movies, he said Wallace Beery was not a saint. He said Wallace Beery treated me like a dog on set. He said as soon as the camera stopped rolling, I was nothing to him. He talked to me any kind of way like he was the meanest person ever. Jackie Cooper said he remembered recording a very intense scene with Beery. Even when the scene was over out of instinct, he was a child. He reached out to hug Beery. Why can't he push this little boy away and almost push this little boy on his behind? Like you trying to push that child over that child is asking for a hug. That's just some of the reasons he was nasty Let me tell you some other stuff. There was another child actress Margaret O'Brien when she worked with Wallace She said that people had to protect her because he kept pinching her Like he kept pinching her like if she messed up on something or probably even if she didn't mess up This man was pinching this little girl. That is sadistic behavior now, everything I'm telling you is stuff that happened in the 1930s. He was always this way. In 1916, he married Gloria Swanson, who was only 17 years old and he was 30 years old. She says that he raped her on their wedding night. If you know Gloria Swanson and you know the type of actress that she was, I'm pretty sure that she was going to do something with him. She was just trying to do this little, probably that little sly, sexy stuff. Hold on, let me do a Gloria Swanson. She probably was trying to do some little stuff like that. You know, like, not tonight, Wallace. 
Something like that. Child Wallace that bust that woman upside the head and took it, baby. He was a brute. Let's go to the year of 1931. The Academy Awards was going on. And they had actually announced the winners before the ceremony. Honey, Wallace Beery heard that Frederick March had one best actor. How about he went up to MGM and stormed inside the office of Louis B. Mayer? Oh my gosh. This is a man who had repeatedly cursed out and fired other actors all through the years, including Joan Crawford. But he sat up here and let Wallace Beery storm in his office, honey, tell him that you need to give that Best Actor award to me. That's my award. And you know what happened? The result became a tie for Best Actor of the Year. A tie between Wallace Beery and Frederick Mark. And so from then on, the Oscar votes were tabulated by Price Waterhouse and they started to announce the winners at the ceremony. He changed that rule with him acting a fool. Can you believe that? We could have been knowing who the winners were, but here come Wallace messing stuff up. Ugh. And there's one more disturbing fact about Wallace Beery. In 1939, right after divorcing his second wife, he adopted a seven-month-old baby girl and named her Phyllis Ann, claiming he wanted to take care of the child as a single father. Nobody ever heard from that baby again. Ever. And there was no adoption papers to say where he got the child from. She didn't even show up in his obituary when he died. That child literally disappeared. There's something so disturbing about that. First of all, where did he get the child? That's first of all. Second of all, how did this child just disappear in thin air and nobody knows what happened? So, you know, he's just a shady character. He's, a, he's shady, very sketchy, and um, he might have been a great actor, but his personality was the skids. He was not a good person. Um, at least it doesn't seem like it. So anyways, this is the tragic, scandalous tale of Mr. Ted Healy and the scandalous, downright dirty tale of Wallace Beery. Thank you so much. I hope you have a great night.